Hello everyone, welcome to PCT Lecture 10. Today we will discuss power system stability. It consists of swing equation, power angle equations, power angle curve, and then we will use uh, equal area criterion to find out critical clearing angle and critical clearing time. The power system in their normal operating state, it works as a synchronous system. So for example, in our uh, daily life, we work with uh, 50 Hz uh, electricity. So everything in our system have to synchronize with the 50 Hz. Um, if you are uh, at the sending end, the generator will rotate and output 50 Hz um, electricity. If you are at the receiving end, you also receive that kind of 50 Hz. So if we flux something in the middle, let's say a uh, new load or a new generator or motor, it should be able to synchronize with the system. And hence, uh, our stability studies need to evaluate the impact of those disturbances on the electro and mechanical dynamic behavior of the power system. To be able to do that, we need to simplify our system by making assumptions. So there are three major assumptions here. Uh, first, only synchronous frequency currents and voltages are considered. So essentially, our DC offset and harmonic components are all neglected. Second, only symmetrical components are used. And third, voltage of electrical machines is considered unaffected by speed variation. So during our analysis, we assume that it stays constant. So first we look at the behavior of a generator for example. This generator rotates with the angular speed of omega and the mechanical torque applied to it is Tm in the same direction with omega and the winding of the rotor or the machine will generate a electrical torque in the reverse direction of omega. So here is the equation showing the relation between the movement of the uh, rotor and the torque applied to it. J here is the moment of inertia of the rotor. Theta is the angular displacement of the rotor referred to a stationary frame which doesn't move and T here is the time. So if we convert this one to a new form then we can rewrite it as this formula. We also express the same relations but here we have H is the inertial constant of the rotor which is megajoule over mega VA this one expresses the relation between the kinetic energy of the machine or the rotor in comparison with the base power of a system. The PM and PE is the power that apply to the rotor, which is also there also in PU. Delta here is the angular displacement of the rotor this time it referred to the rotating frame of omega t. t here is also the time. So this one we call this the swing equation. And this swing equation will be used to analyze the behavior of the rotor of an electric machine. Next we look at a single machine on a infinite bus. This infinite bus is the one that has constant frequency and voltage um, regardless of the condition of the transmission line. So in this case we can rewrite the um, schematic as this one in PU expression. So we get rid of the transformer here and replace it with a reactants. 
the generator will be expressed using a voltage source and a reactance of xg here so everything in combination we have a equivalent reactance of xg plus xd plus x line here we assume that we take the v bus as a reference with zero angle and the vg here will have a phase angle of delta so we can calculate the active power at the sending end or at the receiving end by reviewing lecture 2 here we have PE equal VG times Vbus over X EQ psi delta or it is P max psi delta so next we compare the swing equation with the power angle equations so here is the result on the left hand side we have the expression that show the uh, change variation of uh, our delta over time and on the right hand side we have the um, power of the mechanical and the electrical power if we float it we see that the electrical power will be like this so this is the Pmax times psi delta you take this shape the horizontal axis is the angle and the vertical axis is the power this power will be compared with the mechanical power here so for example our mechanical power PM is here so we assume that at the beginning it stays stable so PM equal P max psi delta at this point X and it's balanced next we assume that there's a certain change and the power of the mechanical side change from PM to PM1 to is higher in this case looking at the equation d square delta over dt square will be positive and therefore the rotor accelerate to a delta 1 here so it accelerate so at this point y the PM1 become equal with the PE which is P max sine delta 1 but it doesn't stop here because here it has some speed and kinetic energy so it continues to increase delta to delta 2 which is at the point Z here and here at the point Z2 PM1 less, is less than P max times sine delta 2 so PM1 is smaller than PE so next it needs to form back to the initial point because here our left uh, right hand side will be negative and therefore the d square delta over dt square will be negative so it decelerate back to y and then it continues to decelerate to x and then it oscillate around y in this case we look at our equal area criterion which says that in this case a1 will equal way 2 a2 because the kinetic energy gain will be equal to the energy loss during deceleration here we assume that there is no um, loss in the winding or in the system so the system will oscillate around y like this so next we look at the stability during a certain change of the input power so we just mentioned that a certain change of the input power will um, make the um, rotor increase the position from delta 0 or position x to y with delta 1 and then jump again to delta 2 at the, the position z here if z somehow has the uh, electrical power PE equal to PM then the system will not oscillate back but it will stay here because it's the new balance position
So next we discuss the stability during a balance three phase fault. For example, we look at uh, this system, which has a generator connecting via transformer, and then have a transmission line connecting it to a infinite bus. If we neglect the resistance of the transformer and the generator, the generator PE is zero during fault, for example, we have a short circuit here, then the voltage of this will be zero during the fault, and therefore, during the fault, the power PE in the system will be VG times V here uh, over the X of this uh, part, it will be zero. So at first we start with the X position where we have the PM equal PE, but suddenly the PE becomes zero, and then um, our swing equation pointed out that uh, our rotor must move accelerate from delta zero to delta one, which is here. And um, if we assume that S delta 1, the flow is clear, and PE takes the value according to this position, which is P max times sine delta 1. Suddenly, we have the situation of PE is higher than PM. So the rotor decelerate to Z here because now we still have the speed of the rotor, so it's slow down and stop here at Z. And then it will return to X, and then we have the system oscillating around X. Now we don't want that to happen. What we want is that when we clear the fold, the system we start from Y here, decelerate to Z, and stop at Z. So the condition of stopping at Z is that PM here will equal the new electrical power P max time sine delta max. So this occur when we adjust the delta one in the middle to be delta C, we is called. Uh, critical clearing angle, so that the area A1 here will become this area A2. So this occurs when delta max is determined by this uh, PM line, and it will be pi minus delta 0. And delta C the critical clearing angle will be given as cosine c uh, cosine delta c equal cosine delta max plus pm over p max times delta max minus delta zero. So here we can find out delta c by taking the arc cosine of this one. Next, the critical clearing time tc is the time that needed for the rotor to move from delta 0 to delta C. We need to know this one because we need to operate the switch to restore the system right at delta C. So this DC will be square root of 4H times delta C minus delta 0 over omega times PM. So next we look at a numerical example. So in this case we consider a 50 hz single machine on a
So first, we draw the equivalent circuit. So the generator will be pre-draw as a voltage source Vg in series with a reactance Xd prime. The transformer will be replaced with a uh, with a inductor Jxd. Two trans uh, two transmission line will be redraw as uh, two reactants x line 1 and x line 2 in parallel. So before the fold, the electric uh, current will flow from the left hand side to the right hand side. And our equivalent uh, reactants here will be xd prime in series with xd and in series with the two line in parallel. So the total impedance or equivalent uh, reactance will be 0.675 PU. At the receiving end, we know the apparent power already is given as this form. But we also know that it is V bus times the current, the main current, conjugate. And therefore, here we have V bus equal 1 PU, so I equal 0.9 plus J 0.8 conjugate with A 0.9 minus J 0.8 BU. Here we apply KVL to 5 VG and KVL say that VG equal V bus plus the current times the equivalent impedance here. And then we can find that VG equal 1.655 with the angle up 0.3757 uh, radian in PU. Notice that here I prefer radian. Therefore the initial angle here is delta 0 equals this angle 0.3757 radian. So after finding the initial condition delta 0 is here we can find out delta max, which is pi minus delta zero. And then the maximum power will be given as P max equal Vg amplitude times V bus amplitude over X equivalent, which is here. The critical clearing angle delta C will be given by comparing the area A1 and A2 here. And we have the formula to do that. The formula say that it is a cosine of cosine delta max plus pm over p max times delta max minus delta zero. Replacing the numbers here, we have 1.624 radian. And finally, the critical clearing time will be given as dc equal square root of 4h times delta c minus delta zero over omega times pm. Our omega here is 2 pi f, which is 2 pi times 50 h and the others, they are all in PU. And here we have the radian expression. And in the end, we have TC equal 0 0.3255 second. So notice that here I prefer the radian expression because when we calculate here, it should be in radian. Here as well, it should be in radian. So this is the end of our lecture. For your homework, please uh, practice tutorial 10 and this also our uh, last lecture for PCT so please review everything and prepare well for the final exam